that. We've seen projects that have failed before. I have to ask, uh, Nick, was this worse than BitConnect? Uh, I've been around uh, a while. In fact, I have BitConnect here. <laughs> but uh, it, was this worse than BitConnect? Uh, is this something that you will look back and say this may have been the worst uh, failure of a project? Oh, man, that's, that's a really good question. I don't know. I mean, BitConnect was, I was still early in crypto when that happened. And I, I think BitConnect was really big because it was, you know, it was a pretty global project. And it was, at least for me, the first time I remember when, you know, you really had like a pretty massive global outcry over this. You had a lot of regulators looking into it because, you know, the promoters were based everywhere. But that one was also, you know, it felt like a much more straightforward, you know, uh, pyramid scheme type project. So it was familiar. It's, you know, the structure was familiar. The way it fell apart was familiar. The laws that were used to shut it down were familiar. And remember, Bitconnect was shut down because regulators said, hey, you know, you're offering a Ponzi scheme. Stop. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, you know, a collapse <laughs> in the same way. This one was a, you know, there was no regulator out there saying like, oh, hey, you know, Terraform Labs, we have questions about what you're doing. This was kind of a natural collapse. So, yeah, it does feel like this one's a little bit bigger in that sense because, um, you know, there was no, you know, external action taken. There were conspiracy theories that, you know, like BlackRock had, you know, whatever gotten involved or that, yeah, you know, Citadel had gotten involved. And it looks like, you know, both of those conspiracy theories were unfounded. This was just straight up a project collapsed on its own. And, you know, if there's a response, if there's a reaction, it's going to be to that fact that, you know, it was a house of cards. It was, you know, there was absolutely nothing to, you know, prod it to falling apart. It just did. And so, yeah, for, you know, from that point of view, I think absolutely this is going to end up looking a lot bigger than, you know, BitConnected, at least just for that specific kind of, you know, circumstance. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was crazy to see BitConnect happen, but this was uh, its own project imploding, which is crazy to see. And, uh, you know, I want to end off here, Sam, uh, let us know. You've told us about how the project has, has you know, failed at this point. But let us know, uh, what do you see as far as the future of stable coins? Uh, do you see this market expanding or contracting um, due to this current uh, failure? Uh, or do you think in the, in the future we'll have one stable coin to rule them all? Uh, what do you think as far as the uh, industry? Yeah. Um... What I think almost feels irrelevant, I have no idea, first off. Um, I can say what, <laughs> what I've been seeing. Um, it's, it's really hard to predict what exactly is going to happen here. Um, but for, uh, one thing that I'm certain of is somebody's going to try this whole algorithmic stable coin thing again, and it's probably going to get really big. Is it going to work? I don't know. Um, but we're already seeing it. Um, the founder of Tron, Justin Sun, who is, to say the least, a controversial figure, is pitching out his own algorithmic stablecoin right now, which is almost exactly the same as Terra's model. <laughs> you can look into it. Um, it's pretty fascinating. Coindesk has its own, you know, an interview up um, recently on that. But basically, people are going to try again. There's money to be made. Um, and also the, the pitch around having a currency that is, you know, not regulated in the same way as a CBDC would be um, and doesn't have like the same privacy constraints as one of those. Like the pitch is an appealing one to a lot of, you know, people who are attracted to crypto. So people will try again for that reason as well. So we're going to see it again. But what we see right now um, on the other side of things, on the non-algorithmic stablecoin, just broadly is twofold. First, I think we are going to see a lot more Money. Um, what well, we're going to see a lot more skepticism around algorithmic stablecoins and a lot more, you know, mindshare going towards these, um, you know, tokens like USDC and USDT, which are collateralized stablecoins. They're backed theoretically one to one. Um, so one of the things to keep, you know, mind of um, specifically one story to just I don't know think about is there have been um, questions to say to use one word, uh, about USDT's reserves. The, the USDT, the Tether stablecoin, there have been questions around whether they are actually backed one-to-one to a -one dollar. About a year ago, um, that didn't mean that much because it's kind of at the core of decentralized finance, Tether is. And so to question it is to question everything in decentralized finance, and people just can't <laughs> afford to do that with how much money is in there. But I do think, as we've started to see over the past week, People are on that, you know, USDC, USDT side of things. People are going to look for 
collateralized stable coins that they can trust, even though they're nothing like that algorithmic stable coin model. They're, we've already seen capital over the past year, and it's sped up over the past week, moving from Tether to USDC, um, which is you know, a more transparent version of that collateralized model, even though, you know, some people have issues with that whole, you know, system as well. But anyway, that's something to to keep mind of as well.